Greetings and welcome back to Haftarot, the weekly video cast in which we take a look at the upcoming week's Haftarah, understand its message, and try to understand the connection between it and the Kriyata Torah, which it follows. Uh, this week, we are we have two special days, both Shvi'i Shal Pesach, which this year falls on Shabbat, and on Sunday here in Chutzlar, it's Acharon Shal Pesach, or Shmini Shel Chag HaMatzot. And there's a special Haftarah that is read in all Eidot uh, on the eighth day of Pesach. And that's what we're going to take a look at here. And the reason is because the Haftarah, which we read on Shvi'i Shal Pesach, is also read this year on Shabbat Parshat Ha'azinu. And so we'll hold it until then, Shirat David. But in the meantime, we'll take a look at the Haftarah of Od Hayom Benov La'amod, famous Haftarah of the eighth day of Pesach. Uh, this Haftarah focuses on another redemption, another Geula. But this Geula is not the Geula of the past, of Mitzrayim, which we celebrated at the beginning of the Chag, but rather it is the Geula that we anticipate in the future. And of course, there are numerous different visions of what that Geula will look like. Will it happen through God alone? Will it happen through a human agent, who we call Mashiach? Uh, what's the role of Eliyahu in that Geula? Uh, is it involve war? Does it involve some apocalyptic vision, as we see in, for instance, in Amos and in and, and Yoel? Uh, is it going to be all peaceful? Is it going to be nationalistic, universalistic? All possible or many possible approaches are presented in the Nevi'im, uh, and we're going to take a look at one of them. Um, and here I scouted out as an example um, uh, the vision in Zechariah from the beginning of the Second Temple period, unless this part, part of Zechariah may even be earlier, uh, in which the king who is going to come and redeem the people is seen as a wealthy man, but yet a poor man riding on a donkey, giving us both options within one phrase. The Haftarah that we have, as I said, from Ishayahu, and it really is the conclusion of the first literary section of Sefer Yeshayahu, which ends here at the end of, of Perak Yud Bed. Uh, and the, um, the, this particular prophecy envisions a human being who is a descendant of David, who is going to be a great judge and is going to be a man of justice and is going to lead the people. And that will be the redemption. And the second half of the Haftarah talks about what the redemption will accomplish, bringing all of the people together and in in visions that evoke and remind us of Yitzhak Mitzrayim, of redeeming them and bringing them home. I want to show you something here towards the end of the Haftarah, focus on something on the end of the Haftarah, uh, and uh, two different things, and uh, and with that, kind of give a, a little taste of what of what this Haftarah is about. Uh, in Pasuk uh, Tedvav, here in, uh, in Para, and this is already in uh, Perak Yud Aleph, and here we see God going to war, as it were, against the river of Egypt or the sea of Egypt. And he's going to smash it so it will go into seven rivulets. And he will lead people through as they walk through. And the vision here certainly evokes Kriyat Yamsuf. As a matter of fact, the Midrashim that we have that talk about there being 12 different channels in Yamsuf, and each Shevet walked through their own channel, is based on this vision of there being seven different rivulets or seven different parts of the sea that they, that they are able to walk through. And uh, this continues, And the redemption from Mitzrayim is actually explicitly invoked here. And then, So let's see what this Messianic age looks like. What are you going to say on that day? I give you thanks, Hashem. First, you were angry with me, God. You punished me. You exiled me. And then you re re recalled your anger and you comforted me. And then we have some psukim that clearly mark a literary end that have what we call a colophon uh, buried in them. We have many songs especially in the uh, songs that written by the medievalists in which they encoded their name in the song. Like Yari Bon Alam, was written by Yisrael, Rabbi Yisrael Najara, the chief rabbi of Azza. And so the word Yisrael is spelled out in the first 
uh, in the first words. Abraham ibn Ezra wrote uh, Im Eshmara Shabbat, and it spells out Avraham. Uh, spell, uh, sorry, Elohim Sadenu, the, the song that we sing on Motzei Shabbat, and it spells out Avraham. The verses spell out Avraham. In the same way, we see here that this is Yeshayahu Hanavi. So take a look at Pasuk Bet. Hinei el Yeshu ati evtach velo evchad. Here, God is my redemption. I'm, I, have, I have trust and I'm not afraid. He oziv zimratia Adonai. Of course, that reminds us of the Kriyat Torah on Shvi Isha Pesach and Shirat Hayam. Vahi li li And he is my salvation. Usha'avtem mayim bisasson. You will draw water joyously. Mima'inei ha'yeshua. From the springs of salvation. And you notice that in these three, in these two verses, the word Yeshua shows up three times, which of course is the name Yeshayahu. Yeshayahu is signing his name here at the end of this first large chapter or volume of his work. Uh, if you take a look at uh, Perak Yod Gimel, which immediately follows this, you'll see that there's a whole different theme, and that's the Masot against the nations. From Artem Bayomahu, Hodul Adonai Kiru Vishvahu Diuva Amim Alilotav. And that day you're going to say, and this is the prayer that, of course, has expanded in Yibre HaYamim, uh, Aleph, uh, Peretet Zion, where we have this beautiful song that we all incorporate in our, into our Tfilot and Psukei de Zimra. Hazkiru ki nizgav shmo, mention that God's name is exalted, is Amru Adonai, sing to God, ki geuta sa, he has done very high and mighty things. This, of course, reminds us of ki ga'o ga'a and shirat hayam. Mudad zot v'chalaris, the whole world knows about that. And then, of course, again, invokes uh, for us, or evokes for us, shirat hayam, uh, that uh, all of the people in Endom and Moab and Fishtim are all afraid because they heard about, she, about the Kriyat Yamsuf. Sahalini, Tzali Varoni Yoshevet Sion. You who live in Sion should be rejoicing and singing. Because the Holy One of Israel is great in your midst. And that is how the Song of Redemption, as it were, ends. This is a Haftarah, by the way, that was appropriated in many communities to be read also on Yom HaTzma'ut, uh, because it reflects the messianic era that many of us believe that we are in one form or another experiencing, thank God, with the reestablishment of Jewish sovereignty and the tremendous nace and gift of HaKadosh Baruch Hu of our Medina Yisrael. I want to wish everybody a Shabbat Shalom, a Chag Sameach, and a Geula Shlema, a complete redemption that we should experience. The Shana Haba'a, we should only have one day of Chag, and we should all be together in Eretz Yisrael. Shabbat Shalom, Echad Sameh.